Are you guys ready for something new and exciting? No? You're not? This, this is really, really cool. We'll start, with, we'll start with this shape here. We'll color it in because this is part of the fun. We'll color the end of this purple. And the rest of it yellow. Oh, nice. not happy with how the computer is responding to my coloring. But there we go. So we got this shape. Let's say this is made, of, well it's, it's yellow. It's made out of solid gold. So that is pretty exciting already that we've got a shape out of gold. What is the volume of that shape? Well you've probably already complained to yourself a little bit about this year that you have to know, I have to know my formula for volume of a sphere. I have to know my formula for volume of a cone and volume of a cylinder. And now I have this shape, the volume of the loud horn. Is that what that kind of thing? I don't know what the name of that. It's like, like it's like a megaphone kind of thing, but it's like solid. So when you try to yell into it because it's made of solid gold, not only is it really heavy, but it doesn't amplify any sound. But it's still worth a lot of money, so you're happy to have it. Okay? So this is our shape. We want to find the volume of it. And the idea for the volume is sort of the same idea that the volume formulas, at least some of them that we know already, are formed. For example, volume of a rectangular prism. I'll draw one. There's our rectangular prism. How do you find the volume of that? If I told you this was 2, this was 3, this was 7, how would you find the volume of that? It's 237. That's our new math, right? We just, that would be cool. Is there a number where you can do that? Because then I have to use that in math later. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about that. But no, it is not 237. Yeah, no, because 1 times 1 times 1 is not 111. But it's close. All the numbers are the same. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So area, I mean, volume of this will be length times width times height. Now, part of the volume of this is the idea that if we took the area of the bottom, so the bottom here is like one piece of paper. Its area is six. And then if you kept stacking papers on top of each other, until you got to the top, you take that area of the bottom, which is 6, and multiply it by 7, and then you get 42, which is the volume of that shape. The same thing happens when we went to cylinders. Wow. Crayon cylinder, bottom, perfect. Here's our cylinder. If we figure out the area of the bottom, that area of the bottom is pi r squared based on some radius. And then your cylinder volume formula is just imagining you had pieces of paper that were cut in perfect circles and you kept stacking them up all the way up to the top so we had to multiply by the height to get the volume. And that would make the volume of your cylinder. So we have this idea with our prisms and with our cylinders that if we could just count the shapes, the two-dimensional shapes, up to the height that we need, we get the volume. Kind of like stacking paper all the way to the top. The problem with this golden shape that I have right now is if I would turn it on its side and I would cut it, what shape would I get right here? A circle. I'd get a gold disc. Can you imagine that? Can you see that all of the gold discs that are moving along here, though, are a different size? And so the problem is that our radius is changing on our circles as we're going along. But if we could somehow count all of those circles individually as the radius changed and add those all up, 
then that would get the volume of this shape. So how do we do that? Well, we think about integration because if I were to integrate from here to here, that would give me this area, right? And we remember that that area, when we figured it out, integration just basically made smaller and smaller and smaller rectangles. If you would go to a minuscule rectangle, say right here, what would that equal? Or what would that represent as it got smaller and smaller? It would basically be the radius of that particular circle. And as we integrate all the way along, we get all of those radiuses and put them together, and that gave us the area under the curve. So now if we took each of those radiuses and rotated it 360 degrees over the x-axis, one of those radiuses, say the one that I've got here, rotated 360, would make one of those circles. And if we took all of those circles and added them up, then we would get our volume. And so that is what is shown in this formula right here. Our function, f of x, that becomes all of our radiuses. So no matter where we pick a point along here, we get a radius. The area of a circle is just pi radius squared. So this pi that's right here could be inside, but can you see that we have pi radius squared in this formula? Then if we integrate from point A to point B, what we're going to do is get all of those radiuses one after another, and it's like multiplying by the height for our cylinder, and we figure out our final formula, and this will calculate the volume. So before we get into anything too crazy, let's have some fun with this. What kind of formulas could you make by rotating things over 360 degrees over the x-axis? What would happen if I took a normal line and I rotated, and a line specifically that went through the origin? If I rotated that line 360 degrees, Can you see I would make this shape? Sometimes color coding it helps us. Ooh, let's say there's the bottom. It's sometimes easier to see the shape if you color the bottom and the side a different color. I like the idea of having gold things. So this is all pure gold. Just like before, can you see what, what do we call that shape? A cone. What's our formula for volume of a cone? That's one of the ones we had to memorize. One third pi r squared. And this is r, right? Times by, we forgot something in the formula, times by height. Okay? So, in our golden cone that's here, would you agree that this would be your radius? And this would be your height because it's on its side. Yes? So now let's show how calculus can get us that formula. Can you see as you move along here, your radius is changing? We need to know what is the equation of this line. Is it y equals x? What's the slope of that line? I know that the y-intercept is 0, so I know it's going to be y equals mx plus 0. What's m? Good, m is slope. What's the slope of that line? It's not 1 half. Should I give you a hint? 
<laughs> yeah. Close. Slope is what over what? Rise over run. Rise over run. What's our rise? Radius over height. Okay, good. There we go. That's the equation of that line, radius over height x. Seems kind of weird, but we're creating a formula. What we're going to do is we're going to say, if you choose any radius, any height, what happens to this volume? What does that mean? Well, what we found was one of these circles is pi r squared. So if I write pi and the radius is just based on this, on this function, f of x, which is r over hx all squared, and I integrate that from 0 up to h, what happens? Well, let's simplify this a little bit. I could, this is dx, I could pull the pi outside if I wanted, 0 to h. If I square this, can you see that I would get r squared x squared over, that's a beautiful h, h squared dx. Hello. We set up our integral from 0 to h. Now we integrate. The only thing we're integrating with, remember that r and h, those are all constants. So we're integrating with respect to x. This pi could still be outside. And we add 1 to the exponent and divide by that, going from 0 to h. So you might already see where the one-third comes from in your, in your cone formula. Because when we added 1 to that x squared, we had to divide by 3. So we've got a one-third in here. As far as evaluating this, so it's going to be pi times, and we're going to do something minus something, plug in h. When you plug in h, you're going to get r squared h cubed over h squared times 3. When you plug in 0, you get 0. Simplifying this, can you see that your h cubed over h squared just becomes an h? And we've got pi r squared h all divided by 3, which is our volume formula for our cylinder. So what we can do with this is not only can we calculate the volume of any kind of shape, but we can also create some of our formulas if we can figure out things that are perfectly circular. I mean, if you want to create your cylinder formula, cylinder formula is a really boring equation. Straight line. Rotate that. 360. This is your h. This is your r. What is the equation of this straight line? Horizontal lines are y equals? y equals r. Right? Because it's going to stay at your radius all the way along. h is where you're going to integrate from. You could create your cylinder formula. So now you don't have to memorize them anymore. You just get them. You just derive them. I guess you're not, de are we deriving the formulas or are we integrating the formulas? I don't know. Well, okay. So now going back, the next thing that we could do with this is we could say, if I can find the volume of any shape rotated, if I have the area between two curves, can you see that I could take the volume of the bigger one, take out the volume of the one inside, and then you can find volumes of crazy shapes like that, which looks like a bell. So you can find volumes of bells, formulas for volumes of bells and all sorts of different things. And it looks like, I don't know what, what equation is that, maybe part of an x cubed graph there and part of a parabola there, and you make a nice bell. So here's our first question. Find the volume of the solid 
that's generated when the area under x cubed is rotated from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So again, we can draw a picture of this. Here's our x cubed graph. We know that it goes through 1 comma 1, 2 comma 8, And if we would rotate this, we would get this shape. Again, I find that in order to see it best, color coding this. So let's go to our crayons, color code the circle in one color, and oh. the side in another color. Oh, it's just from one to two. Thank you. There we go. So we've just got this little part. And we want to find the volume of that. So we set up, each of those are circles. So part of the reason you can remember your volume formula is because they are all circles, you've got pi r squared. You can put that pi either inside or outside of your integral. We're going from 1 to 2 because that's where our radiuses would be. Our function was x cubed, and that gets squared because of radius squared. So now we have to figure out what's the best way to integrate this. Well, I would probably simplify things because pi cubed squared is just pi to the sixth, and that is something that's easy to integrate. Pi is outside. We would have x to the seven over seven from one to two. Plug in 2, 2 to the 7, 128 over 7. Plug in 1, 1 over 7. Subtract those and you get that your volume is 127 pi over 7. Did we have any units? Just a bit to see the picture, see the coloring. So we've drawn our picture, set up our integral, squared it. The nice thing about squaring a square root is it goes away. Integrating and evaluating. <coughs> 